just when you thought it couldn't get any more exciting in the world of graphics cards, EVGA go and launch the Kingpin 2080 Ti. It's the flagship of the GeForce RCX range, which has been designed for the highest overclocking performance. And here to tell us more is Jan the Man from EVGA. So tell us about some of the main features. Yeah, well, the Kingpin series itself, right, at EVGA is, um, EVGA, they're always, we're always interested in uh, enthusiasts and getting the best out of the best. And the Kingpin series really comes here. The Kingpin cards is the sixth generation now. And uh, the first RTX ray tracing card it is. And we have plenty of features included again. Um, you have to imagine that we have a, back in the headquarter in uh, Taiwan, yeah. we have a, a lab where uh, Kingpin yeah. and uh, Tin, He's the designer of the uh, PCB. He is. Um, so they've de designed in collaboration, have they? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And they have their, it's it's very fancy. They have their own lab. They have liquid nitrogen tanks everywhere. It's uh, cool. And there they um, really designed the card and uh, develop it. And uh, here we have it now. And they've pushed it really to the limit, haven't they? Yeah. Tell us about some of the new things then with the design. What can we expect? So we have the, the Turing technology, right? Um, the RTX technology. And um, it, it also needs a lot of power this time. So I actually have uh, already uh, tore down a card right here. Yeah, and here's um, one we tore earlier, hey? so we can yeah, have a exactly. real look inside. Yeah, so I, I just started to talk about the power draw, right? So um, there are some limiting factors for overclocking itself. It's um, you need enough power, yep. obviously. So we have um, three eight pins right here. Um, so you can technically draw 520 watts and above. Mm -hmm. um, there are some tricks where you can get even more. <laughs> and um, so you're not limited by the power. Okay. You're not definitely not limited by the power. And then the other part, which is very important, is cooling. Yeah. So um, that's why this time we decided to do a hybrid cooling solution. Hybrid cooling solution means that we have a, um, a water cooler, an all-in-one cooler for the GPU and the memory and uh, an air cooler, it's a 100 millimeter fan, um, for, for the VRM section. Yeah, and with that cooling solution, we can really um, push it out of the box. You just have to just take the card, put it in, and then you can already start uh, your overclocking and your benching. Awesome, so what can we expect then in terms of overclocking? How far can you push this card? So with this, um, I mean, it's always also depends on the GPU itself, right? It differs a little bit, um, however, for, for this card, because it's just the best, right? You have such a good layout. We are actually hand selecting the GPU. So you are, when you're buying a Kingpin card, you can be sure that you get a, a good chip and a good overclock chip. So you can't really tell a number because it still differs. Okay. Um, but we can try later on uh, to see how far we can go. I think ranges of uh, 2,100 megahertz, um, even up to 2,200, depending on the, um, are definitely uh, possible to reach with the, with out of the box cooling, yeah, the yeah. liquid nitrogen cooling, um, extreme overclocking, which this card is also designed for, you can reach something like 2,500, even yeah. even above. It's pretty megahertz. awesome, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, so what else have we got then? What's new with the 2080 Ti? Um, so maybe I'll I'll just um, start with the, the the PCB itself is totally different um, to to a reference card, for example. If this is a, this is a reference 2080 Ti. Okay. Yeah, and. Um, and, and this is the, the Kingpin edition. You can already tell from the size that there is a <laughs> big oh difference. <yes. laughs> and um, maybe I'll just, uh, I just start uh, with, the, with the card here. Um, so again, the cooling solution is an, an hybrid cooling solution. Um, and uh, we have uh, um, copper blocks right here for the VRM. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this needs to be cooled. Uh, and uh, that's why we use the, the copper version. Um, then we have, maybe I'll come a little bit closer. Um, then we have the memory, um, which is under here. This is also a full metal, uh, full uh, copper block. And here you see the memory chips. It's uh, 11 gigabytes. And actually, also also for the memory, um, what is um, what we need to mention? Um, the uh, cards, the RTX cards, uh, 2080 Ti's, they come with um, Micron memory or Samsung memory. Yeah. And uh, it, for us, we, we tested it and uh, it turns out that the Samsung memory is, um, let's say, um, it's a more consistent uh, overclocker. Okay, so we something also to bear in mind. So this is also something what makes the, this card unique. When you buy a Kingpin card, you not just get the hand-selected uh, GPU die, you also get um, uh, definitely uh, Samsung memories because we want you to achieve the best overclocking. Of course. Yeah, and um, back to the cooling. This is um, 
This is an, uh, an Acetec uh, Gen 6 uh, pump, which is connected, mm -hmm. um, the water cooler which is connected uh, to, the, to the copper block. So actually the memories are also water cooled. Yep. Also just um, the back plate itself. Um, which yeah, is what's, in the new, what's new on here? Is there anything that we should be looking out for here? Yeah, what, is, um, what we learned with the, with the Pascal cords already, that um, putting, so the heat is not only on the front side of the PCB, it's also on the back side. So here it also gets quite hot. So if you take just a normal back plate without the thermal pads, um, then then the heat will stuck. So we in the so we put um, thermal pads all in the these areas which are really heating up, like the GPU, the memories, and also uh, the VRM. So this also really helps to cool down the card. Okay. That's um, in its metal. That's it for the back plate, the What's shroud. So just so many say, things to uh, say. There is, <laughs> and it, what's the relevance of the copper then for people that might not know? Why, why particularly copper? Why, the, why uh, is copper is just the—it's the best material to use um, uh, to to transport the heat. Yeah, yeah just okay. the Dissipate most efficient one. Yeah. Cool. Um, the uh, the shroud itself actually it's also metal, uh, so very high quality one, and um, there's also an OLED screen. Yes, I wanted here. to talk about this. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so excited <laughs> about this, but it is. I mean, this is the first time that this has been incorporated, yes, isn't it? And yeah, so yeah. it adds just another level, doesn't it? Talk us through what we can see on there. So there are different um, options. Yeah. You have um, the GPU and the and the memory um, um, frequencies, the voltages, uh, the current voltages. So when you run a benchmark or anything, um, of course you can have it on the screen, and it's very customizable. Also, you can put your own picture on it. Uh, Very and, cool. Uh, stuff so you can like see that, here it yeah. says Kingpin, but you could add your own logo. Yeah. It has another function that if there is, because overclocking, uh, overclocking, is especially in the extreme overclocking, you sometimes come to a point where something is maybe not working anymore. So um, to find out what's exactly not working anymore, um, there are also functions which they will display in the in the in the in the OLED that will tell you or help you to figure out what's really what's helpful, the issue is. It? Yeah, that's uh, it for the shroud. So come, let's come back to the PCB itself um, and for the cooling. So the VRM, it's a, a 16 phase VRM for the V core, which is uh, sitting here uh, and over here. If I just tear the, the part, so. You make it look yeah. so easy. <laughs> well, I already <laughs> removed the screws before. <laughs> we did all the fiddly <laughs> bits before the camera was rolling. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's also really not. You just have to remove the headers and uh, the backplate screws. It's really yeah. quite easy to take apart because that's also what we ask yep. customers to do. They exactly. can take it apart. They Designed can install that. their own cooler. So that's actually also one one point um, why we have um, splitted this cooling. So because it's um, not only the, the GPU you need to cool, you also have to take care of the VRM and the memories. So that's why you can still have the VRM cooling installed and um, the VRM cooling installed and uh, in install your own cooling like um, an LN2 uh, yeah. liquid nitrogen um, container or um, a chiller or just your own cooling solution and keep this uh, still running. Yeah, so perfect. You're so you're sure the VRM is um, cool. That's why we designed it like this, so it's split it. Yeah. Okay. Thought of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Have you met Kingpin and Tim, by the way? Have you been into their office yeah, yeah. that you discussed? Yeah. The wow. Li li yeah, Tell us what it's like. Yeah, in their laboratory, it's um, when you come inside, you really just see a lot of gas tanks. Or you, at, at the beginning, you think, what what are these tanks are uh, all about? And uh, it's like 120 liter uh, wow. of LN2 tanks, I think it is, and uh, three of them. And uh, yeah, lots of carts, lots of um, PCBs laying around, soldered and mm -hmm. modded. And um, there's also a point actually um, when you are, so when you take, for example, the reference card, right, and yeah. you want to do overclocking, you're limited. You're limited um, course, yeah. by several factors. You have to do some small mods, remove some resistors by yourself and mm -hmm. stuff like that to try to overclock this card more. And all these manual over um, manual, manual modding, um, you don't need to do on this card. This is all already done. So you're really just out of the box, ready to go. <laughs> there's a, there's a, it's a triple BIOS. Okay. So you have a little switch right here. Yeah. And uh, you have a normal BIOS, an OC BIOS, and an, an LN2 BIOS for liquid nitrogen overclocking, where basically all the protections are uh, gone and you can just go to the limits. Uh, this is uh, another feature, just a little bit dip switch here. Awesome. Yeah. Then um, right beside it is a, uh, is, is a header for the probe IT. Mm -hmm. So you can um, 
uh, just uh, take your your measurements and um, read out the the, the V core, um, the memory voltage, and everything uh, to check that. But you can also do that with the software, so it's a kind of an extra uh, feature with your multimeter uh, to use. Then uh, on the rear side, we have the uh, three eight pins. Yeah. Yeah. So the three eight pins. So we have enough power. We have a micro USB. We have an. This is also a pretty unique uh, feature. This is an EV bot um, uh, connector. EV bot is a little tool um, which you can also use, connect, and then use to overclock as well and um, set the voltage. It's like a smartphone. Yeah. You take a smart, like a ah, smart okay. smartphone, and then you set the um, frequency. So you can connect it here, and this is just an external fan header. Well. And what we also did is, you can see it here. Um, usually, the the eight pins uh, which you need to connect with the the power supply, with the power supply, the power connectors are at the top. Sure. And we moved it, um, we moved it to the side, so you uh, yeah have less problems with um, with uh, cable clutter and uh, just easier can to have access in yeah, general. Yeah. And have a good routing and good um, air airflow as well. So we have a very clean uh, VRM and power design here, right? Um, and all digital controlled. But when it comes to overclocking and especially extreme overclocking, like I mentioned before, you still have sometimes issues and to troubleshoot, uh, it really helps when you have some small indicators and that's why we added those um, five LEDs here, oh, um, which shows you if there's any problem with voltages or anything. So um, that's also a very uh, helpful Excellent. feature. Nice touch. Let's talk about ICX. I know you've been in before and we've made another yeah, video exactly. on this. If you've yeah. not seen it or if you want to recap, tell us about ICX. So of course we included ICX on the Kingpin card as well. Yes. Um, it's called, uh, for RTX, it's called ICX2 now. It has some more features like real power um, monitoring and stuff like that. So on the Kingpin card, we have 12 sensors around the memory, all the important uh, really components, memory, GPU, of course, uh, VRM areas. And especially for the VRM area, it's interesting because the hybrid cooling solution with a fan mm -hmm. right here sitting with a 100 millimeter fan and for the VRM, this is controlled by not the GPU sensor, of course, but by the um, VRM uh, temperature sensors. There's also a water block. If somebody just want to install it in the, in the already existing uh, custom loop, yeah. then they don't really need the uh, all-in-one solution. So we also offer a water block. Yeah. Amazing. So we've gone over some of the main features then of the car. This is obviously a very complex design between Kingpin and Tin. And we've linked to an article below which will yeah. go into the real nitty gritty for those that, yeah. that want that real detail. So that's it for part one of our in-depth look at the awesome EVGA Kingpin RTX 2080 Ti. I'm sure you want to see how this card performs when overclocked, so check out part two of this review where we walk you through the free to download Precision X1 software and put the Kingpin through its paces.